in this example, we're going to use land XML files to import alignments into Lyco V run. In the example before you, we have a road project with six alignments. We're going to use the roading package in Lyco V to stake points on these alignments. And we're using the road package because these alignments have spiral curves and alignment station breaks in our, in, in our alignments. If we did not have spiral curves or alignment station breaks, we could use the measure to line or stake to reference line in like Aviva to stake these alignments. In this case, uh, again, I have six alignments and we're going to be working in the area here between point numbers. Let me center this up a little bit and we'll zoom in a little more. And we're going to be working between stations one, uh, between control points 113 and 114, and our alignment is Radium Road South. So I have exported my alignments from my CAD package to a land XML file. All of my road center lines are in the same XML file. I've also exported my control point, and I've created a job called Greens, Greensville on my collector here. And I'll just, we'll take a brief look at our, our points in the file. So I'll press F8 and we'll look at the, the points that we've uploaded. Make sure that we have all our control points. If we do, we'll press OK. And now we are ready to import our land XML files and create a road job. So let's go to jobs and data, import data, and we will press import alignment. Now, if we did import XML data, what would happen is because several of the alignments have spiral curves, you would see an error message saying that they can't be imported in directly into the job that they have to go into a road job. So knowing that that's going to happen, I'm going to go straight into a port import alignment. I'm going to set my data type to land XML. I called the name of the file Greensville XML and I placed that in the data directory. If I click here, you'll see that I placed it in my USB directory as noted right here. I could also place this on a SD card or a CF card, but uh, we, we did use the USB in this case and we'll select our Greensville XML file, press OK. And I know that I want to put this into a road job. So I've set my job type to road. My other option is rail. And, I, and since this field is blank, that indicates that I don't have an existing job. So one note here, if you are loading multiple alignments into a, into a road job for a project, all of the alignments need to be in the same XML and imported at the same time or in, into the, the road job. You will not be able to add alignments via the import process after the road job is created. So if you had an additional alignment for the project that you needed to add, you would either need to uh, delete the road job and re-import and re all of the alignments or create a separate road job for the additional alignments. In this case, I'm going to create a new road job. So I'll press in my, my box here and say new. We'll give it a name. We'll call this Greensville also. Just wanna make sure you name it something that you can remember and we'll press store. And now we have our road job created, we'll press okay. And we can then go ahead and press okay here to import the data. It comes up and it tells us that we have six lines that were imported. If I press edit, I can see the lines. And you'll notice that one of these is tagged with a CL for the center line. In this situation, that will be the job that will be displayed in, when we go to road stakeout. If you wanted to change that, if you knew initially you were going to be working on Brunswick Road, you could press that and press Center, or you could select any of the other alignments. Um, in this case, we are going to be working on Radium Road South, so I'm going to select that and press Center and press OK, and press OK again, and we're notified that we have imported six lines, and now it would give me the option to create an additional road job if I had other projects that I'm going to be working on. So I'll press no here. This now takes us to the main menu. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to orient my total stations. Now, when I go into the road stakeout, you're going to see an option to reorient the total station there also, but I want to show you one of the reasons why I do this. So I'm going to go to work. I know I'm going to be working off of 
control points 113 and 114. So I'll go to setup, tell it I'm doing a known backsite. I'm in my job, and as you know, with the like of Diva, you could use a different control file for your control. But in this case, I've got all my points in Greensville. I'm going to set up on point number 113. I'll enter my instrument height. I'll press OK. I'm going to backsite 114. I'll press OK, and I'll go ahead and set the orientation of my instrument. Now, of course, you know if you have a, a unit with imaging capability, at this point you can take a panoramic image of the area that you're working in. In this case, I'll say no. And we are ready to now go to road stakeout. So again, what I want to do is stake in the area of, of instrument point number 113, or control point number 113. So I need to find out what the station is there so that I know what area to work in. So if I don't have a hard copy or something of that nature with, with stations noted, how do I find that out? Well, if I say go to work, I can go to roads, and I can go to road stake. So this brings us into our setup screen. I always need to make sure that I have everything configured properly before I stake out. So. I set my working job to Greensville. This is where I will store any of the data that I collect or any of the points that I stake out. And then I select my road job. In this case, just uh, for way of information, this is an area that we could also change the alignment we're going to work on. And, this, and, and since we brought all our XML files into the same job, this is the only place where we can change the alignment that we're going to work. So if I needed to change my alignment, I would click, click here. And just as before, I could go to data. I'm sorry, let me back up. I could go to edit. One more time, data. And then edit. And once again, it brings me to the screen where I could select the different center lines. But again, we know we're working on Radium Road South, so we're going to leave that selected and press store and press OK. Um, so we've got our, our working job set and our road job set. Uh, if we had a digital terrain model associated with this, we could use that to, to state grades. We're not going to do that at this point. I'm going to press OK. So once we've selected the line to be uh, staked, we want to go ahead and set our configuration. So you do that by pressing F2. This navigation direction <coughs> will um, allow you to set up how the uh, stakeout data is presented to you in the stakeout in this case, I want my information uh, <clears throat> coming to the uh, and the direction of the instrument. So I'm going to say two station. In this case, this means uh, the two station means the instrument. If you wanted your directions to the alignment, you could select that by pressing the box here and selecting alignment. The other things that I set is uh, design. You can set the working corridor. Essentially, this is 100 meters either side of the alignment so you can set that to whatever you would like you can also select to extend the alignments uh, from the beginning of the end you can set your quality control uh, i suggest you set an info page this gives you an additional page that will allow you to in this case i have set it up so that i can see my chainage and my offset uh, these lines are configurable, but on this screen, if I have my instrument set to continuous measure or I am measuring with my GPS receiver with continuous information coming in, I will be able to see a live station and offset and you know, I'd be able to work to a particular station if I need to. And then I do set, if I'm using the total station, I do set this box here to only update stakeout values when the distance is measured. Once I have that set up, I am ready to, um, to begin my staking. So I am staking the line. Uh, that would be your typical um, setup. There are several other things that you can do, but in this case, I am just staking in relation to the alignment. So I'll set that. I'll press OK. And I wanted you to note one of the reasons that uh, we went ahead and set our, did our setup is this station here is the station of my or it's the, the station it doesn't show you the offset but it is the station of point number 113 so this gives me an area that i'm working in <clears throat> and i am working on radium road south i could shift the entire alignment either left or right if i would like to but in this case i want to stake in relation to the 
the confusion line, so I'll press OK. And I am now ready to, to move on. I'll press OK. I get asked to confirm my setup, and we are setting on 113, backsiding 114, so I'll press OK. Now on this screen, I can set the point number of data to be stored. So I'm going to set 10,000 as my point number, put my rod height in, and I'll tell it that I want to start by staking station 130 or 130 plus zero zero. Now, change increment is what's going to happen once I stake and store the point. So what do I want my instruments to do? I can have it, either have it move up or move down my, uh, my stationing. In this case, I want it to move up by 50 feet. And so I have now set myself up to stake station 130. And once that's stored, it'll move to 130 plus 50. If I needed to, I could set an individual offset. So if I needed to stake a five or 10 foot offset at station 130, I could set it here. <clears throat> and then I can proceed on to the stake page. So in this case, I am ready to record, uh, to measure a distance and record my information. So I'll press distance. And the instrument is telling me that I need to uh, come in six feet and go to my right 10 feet. So I now have adjusted my position and I'm online, but I still need to come to the instrument a foot. I've now have adjusted my position yet again, and I need to come, I need to go away from my instrument 700s. Now we had some tolerances set, and once I am within my stakeout tolerances, I will start getting check marks uh, next to my distances here. So if, if this is uh, okay, then I am now able to store that point, or I, I, so I will just press store. And so that information has been stored, and I'm now ready to move to my next point. So I have moved up to staking station 130 plus 50 uh, on the center line, and I am now pretty close to it, so I'm within uh, uh, five feet. One of the things I could do if I wanted to, I could set my uh, distance reading here to continuous. If I did that, you would see the data uh, continue to update. Now I am on a simulator here, so my distance is not changing. Uh, if, as I mentioned earlier, I also have an info page. If I go to my info page, uh, this will tell me my current chainage and my current offset to my center line. So I'm still about nine tenths off because I'm, I'm not actually sitting on the center line. So uh, I do need to move out about 97 hundredths, or in about 97 hundredths, to get, actually get on the line. So let me stop the, stop the distances here. I could also check my map. Uh, because it's on a simulator, I'm not seeing the alignment, uh, but that's okay. The other thing is, in the application screen, I can set a code. So now if I wanted to, if I'm doing a topo, but I need to be on station, one of the things I could do is I could set uh, ground shot or maybe a point on the cross section and have, go ahead and have my code set in here so that I can record that data. So again, I have now focused in on station 130 plus 50 and I am within my tolerances so I'm ready to store the point. So I can press store. And now if I look at my point list, You'll notice that I have point number 10,001 with a code of XS. As you'll also notice, I didn't place a code on point 10,000. If I needed to, I could edit it at that point and go to code and, and add that and store it. And I am ready to move up to the next point, and I can do that by staking, by hitting change plus. And I'm now ready to go to the next